Hey everybody, welcome back. This is episode 101 of D-Town TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. His name is RC. And this is Larry Becker. Hey so guys. we've got a bunch of stuff, what's going on, man? Well, I was just gonna say, RC has a tip in this that we're gonna start with, and then we've got some uh, cool stuff. We've got cheap shots back by request, and I'm the guy that requested it. Um, we've also got, I'm doing a tip on diffusers, and we've got some cool photography sites, so let's jump right in nice. with your tip. Now, this is the deal. If you wanna be able to make a really, really nice picture, one of the common things that you're gonna hear is get your light in a spot other than in your immediate range. To do that, use a monopod. This is something that you should always have. This is standard fare for any off-camera lighting that you're doing. Now, this is a new monopod that I started playing with, and I gotta be honest with you, I'm really, really loving it. It's from Obin, mm -hmm. so it's available at B&H. This is, what, what is this, the ACH 2400. ACM. ACM 2400, yeah. thank you. So, what do I like about it? It goes about six feet tall, so it's a really, really big, it's an aluminum monopod, so it's a little heavy, right? Um, you can extend it. I think that part's really, really cool. And what you would normally do is you would have a series of adapters, right? So I have this umbrella adapter, and what I could do from here is I could take this off right on this monopod. And a lot of the times, people use monopods for uh, holding their cameras. They're but I tend, to, I, I tend to think monopods for off-camera lighting is phenomenal. So you have this adapter. You take this adapter, see the bottom of that? screw it onto the top of this, and now you right. can take that, and then at that point, if you wanted to, you can go ahead, this is the new Nikon uh, SB910. You just grab that, and then you have an adapter for an umbrella, and this would be pretty straightforward. So that part, I think, is kind of cool. I'll show you a couple of tips, though, with this, which I think are really, really neat. Uh, I'm gonna need your foot, Larry. So your flash foot. Yeah, I know what you're If you took a look, <laughs> if you take this and you unscrew this out, you'll notice that at the bottom of it, almost all monopods have this. They all have this screw and open included it, which I think is a really, really nice touch. It's thick on one side, but if you flip it, it's smaller on the other. So by doing that, what you can do is now, you can take the smaller end, you screw the same thing back in, and in this instance, we'll go ahead and just Get that right in there. It takes a couple of screws for you to be able to get it. There you, go. you can actually use your Nikon accessory food, a Canon accessory food. They all come with that small thread. You can take this, spin this on here, and now that's what you would use for your flash if you don't want to necessarily use this thing. Nice option. This is six feet tall, right? But there's gonna be a time where you're not gonna be with it. This is the last thing that I think is really cool. I don't know if you can hear that, it's actually rattling. And at first, some people thought that it was broken, but it's not. Look at the bottom of this. This part is really cool. You unscrew this out, and once you unscrew this out. Very cool. So you have these three legs, and now you can go ahead and take this, and we can spin this in. I was doing this in the office, and I, I need a little distance. There you go. I need it? a little distance to be able there to do that. Once I get it started, you can give it a quick spin. And now. That's very cool. All sorts of different heights. Every now and again, you're gonna have a shoot where you're gonna turn around and say, you know what, I just want that in one spot or you don't have somebody else. You can run, you can set this up as a secondary light. They're $69.95 over at the B&H website. Make sure you take a look at it. I think it's great addition for when you're out there and you're trying to put a light in a new spot and it can double as a little baby stand. That's very cool, Archie. Isn't that cool, dude? Yeah, I, I like, like it. That. So. Okay, so I gotta add that to my wish list. <laughs> You'll go ahead and add that to a wish list. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw to you over yeah. on the Cheap Shots. Take a look at this. Hey, on Cheap Shots this time, I wanna tell you about something that cost me $45. And the reason I'm bringing this up, it was on my blog as part of a different Cheap Shots that I had done. I had a uh, Speedlight Beauty Dish that I built, big plastic beauty dish, and I showed it mounted like this with the beauty dish and the speed light firing. And people were asking me, what is that boom arm? Tell me about that boom arm. It's actually pretty cool. It's an LP621 from the folks at Midwest Photo Exchange. So mpex.com, go to mpex.com. And um, LP621. So what it comes with, it doesn't come with the flash and it doesn't come with the light stand, but it comes with everything else here. 
and it also comes with a couple of clamps that I've removed. So you can actually put, uh, use it as a, a reflector holder and you can use it as a boom arm. And I use mine as like a mini boom arm for my speed light, any number of things. And it's got all kinds of adjustment capability. On the back side though, you probably will, if you get some weight on this thing and start putting it out a little bit, you probably want to put some kind of clamp down here and a counterweight. So it doesn't actually come with a clip and a counterweight on this. So you actually have to probably rig something up. A couple of A clamps or an A clamp and some kind of weight over here seems to work pretty well. That's it for Cheap Shots this time. See you next time. Have you ever wished that you could have direct access to the world's top pro photographers, Photoshop experts, and creative minds? With KelbyTraining.com, that wish is only a few clicks away. Hi, Adam. Dude, I think you are really gonna love this class I have for you today. Our training style is very casual. It's like having your own personal instructor teaching you today's most sought after techniques, step by step, from start to finish, whether it's on location or in studio. It's easy and conversational, unlimited, 24 hour a day access to hundreds of exclusive classes from the world's top pros. A subscription to KelbyTraining.com is a must have for photographers, graphic designers, anyone that's serious about taking their creative skills to the next level. Hey, if you ever need any help, just come back online at KelbyTraining.com. I'm just one click away. Take care. Subscribe today. Visit KelbyTraining.com for more information. Welcome back, everybody, to Deton TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. My name is RC. I'm here with Larry Becker, and none of this wouldn't be possible without the folks over at Kelby Training, our sponsor. If you want to be able to take a look at how to get to be a better photographer with some of the best people in the industry, www.kelbytraining.com, that's the place you want to be able to do it. it it's phenomenal. There's I tons have of different classes. all the time telling me that they try out the one month membership, and after a month, they just sign up for the year. Yep. Just go try it. Go to the Kelby Training website. You have a free pass to be able to take a look at stuff, and I'm guaranteed you're going to sign up. Now, yeah. you're going to pull double duty because you're going to talk to us about diffusers. Yep, I've got diffuser stuff going on right now. Um, I did an experiment, and this actually was out of a conversation that I had with some friends of mine. So um, I want to show you, I took the exact same picture, and I, I, I threw a little black and white on here. This is not a picture that I'm showing you to show you a quality of picture. This is a, very specifically an illustration of what's going on with light and a diffuser. So color doesn't even matter. I just threw a little black and white uh, uh, filter over the top of that. So we've got this same exact picture shot three separate times. And let me tell you what's going on here. The first picture, the one that you see right now, is just a bare flash in a frozen position. And everything is locked down, everything is manual. The exposure is set, the, the uh, white balance, everything is locked down. And the only thing that changes, I'm gonna show you three separate pictures, the only thing that changes in these three pictures is the addition of a diffuser or not. So this first one is bare flash. And you can see, when you look at the face, you see really hard light in this triangle underneath his right eye, our left, and you see these hard shadows coming across his chin. Now, a lot of people think that all you need to do is add a diffuser. and one thing that a diffuser does is it diffuses light. The other thing that it does is it cuts the amount of light. And since I didn't change the exposure, uh, or rather I didn't change the power of the flash, I did have to adjust the exposure. So I did a, a plus 1.5 EV. Now that's just a, a, because I was using a cheap diffuser. And if you're using some better quality diffusers, you'll find that they cut less light. Mm -hmm. But I was using this cheap uh, diffusion material. I just put it flush up against the light. That is the only thing that changed from the first and second exposure. So the first exposure you see this, the second exposure you see this. And you see the exact same thing. A hard, harsh light on his right cheek and the hard shadows there. And people are thinking, well, don't diffusers make the light softer? No, they cut the light. They don't make the light softer unless you get the diffuser away from the light and you use the diffusion material to make a larger light source. So let me show you this third image and I'll explain the difference here. I also used a diffuser on this third image, but you see how the, the shadow is much softer now and the overall image, it, it, 
the, the light softens across his face. I didn't change anything except <coughs> I used this diffuser this time and I got it off the flash, so it was a couple feet away from the flash and it was just right off the camera frame and really close to the subject. And so that way you get a much bigger area of light because the light comes out of the speed light, out of that little small rectangular area and it hits this and that's where it spreads and that's why you have this nice quality of light. So it's not just a matter of using a diffuser, it's a matter of getting that diffuser, getting a big diffuser or a bigger light source and then getting it uh, away from the surface or the face right. of the flash. So it's just kind of like getting it yeah. further back. So one, one was right next to it and one was further back. But I didn't move the flash, I just moved, right. moved the diffuser to, uh, to soften the light. Now, the other thing you might want to consider too is a hot spot. Like you'll notice that sometimes these, all of these flashes have a zoomability. Yeah. So they make a tighter beam spread and a wider beam spread. Sometimes if you're holding it against a diffuser, what will happen is the spot that's right here that's directly hitting the diffuser will be a lot brighter than the rest of the area that's here. Some, uh, some soft boxes that didn't have baffles used to have that, older soft boxes had that, they were called hotspots. Sure. So what you could do is, if you take the zoom and you make your zoom at the widest possible zoom, then you have a wide beam spread. And if you come far enough back, you can minimize the amount of hotspot that you have on something like that. And but it's doing the, the exact light. same thing. Yeah, it it's taking it more. further back and it's spreading it out, making a much bigger light source. Yeah, and then there's also always these. Yep. Light spreaders as well. That always messes me up. Because on the on the SB 900s, it's 800s, and yeah. now the 910s. If you have this flip down, you'll come down here, and you'll always see that it's set at 24. And if you're trying to change the zoom, change the zoom, change the right. zoom, you're like, it doesn't change, it doesn't change. Well, it's that. So three tips in one. In Look at one. that crazy stuff. It's time to take a break, guys. We'll be right back after this. Watch this very important message. I am Joel Grimes, I'm a commercial advertising photographer, I've been doing this for over 35 years. I'm here at Kelby Training to teach you guys how I do my composites. I start in the studio, we take a subject, put her on a white sweep, shoot uh, with uh, my three edge gritty little lighting techniques, then we go in the field, we shoot some HDR backgrounds, and putting it all together in Photoshop and making it one amazing killer image. If you're interested in this kind of compositing, come check out my classes. Thank you for staying tuned in and watching that very important message. You know, <laughs> while we were on break, Brad reminded me, the tip that I just showed you, I didn't invent that. I actually learned it from James Schmelzer on a class that's on KelbyTraining.com. Mm -hmm. James is a great instructor, and one of my favorite things that he does is he breaks down different light patterns and shows you why they exist and shows you then how to build them. Just one of several trainers that does that in a very unique way, mm -hmm. and, it, and it made sense to me, and I enjoyed that. Hope that tip helped you, but if you really want to get into it, go to KelbyTraining.com. Now, we're wrapping up the show. We need to give you some photographic inspiration, and you've got a website. That's right. Over the holiday break, I started taking a look at legendary photographer John Lowengard. He's got a series of books that are out there. Take a look at this website, JohnLowengard.com. Phenomenal, phenomenal work that's there. Uh, he's got three books out there that I think that are really cool. Uh, one of them is called Pictures Under Discussion. Another one is Age of Silver. And the third one is As I See It. Brad and I kind of share a kinship with this Pictures Under Discussion because he's a phenomenal photographer, does a lot of black and white work, does a lot of portraiture stuff. Uh, he, was a photo he was a photo editor. He's worked a lot with McNally. And just an incredible, incredible eye. And over the break, I started taking a look at The Age of Silver, his one, one of his books. And it's a great insight into some of the world's best photographers. He's got Abaddon on the cover. And he does, you know, Brassai and Bresson. And he's taking pictures of everybody in a really, really interesting setting with really, really interesting stories. So make sure you take a look at johnlowengard.com. That's going to be a massive inspiration site for you guys. I'm going to actually do that. I haven't yeah. paid a whole lot of attention to him. And, and being a photo Phenomenal. editor, you get that different kind of perspective. He's than, good. He's than really a good. Uh, we have some stuff to give away. And the way that we give it away is you have to go to the Kelby TV website to the detail. Because you, you know that you can watch this show in a lot of different ways. You can watch it on YouTube. We've got the YouTube channel. You can watch it on Google+. Plus. Uh, but And you can leave comments at each of those places. Mm -hmm. But you need to leave comments if you want to win the prize. You need to leave comments 
at the Kelby TV website. So kelbytv.com slash DTownTV. And leave a comment there, any comment. It can be good or bad. Hopefully it's really good about me. Uh, <laughs> But leave your kind comments or otherwise, and uh, we're gonna draw somebody at random to win Perfect Mask 5. Nice. A very, very cool. nice product from the folks at On One Software. Thank you, On One Software, for yep. the generous donation of Perfect Mask. I'm sure I will use it. I mean, the winner. No, the winner. Will use it <laughs> very, very nicely. But thanks so much, guys, for tuning in, for stopping by. Remember, you can always leave us a comment, give us your suggestions about whatever it is that you wanna see. Who knows? You might see it on the next show. His name's RC. And this is Larry Becker. We'll see you next time, guys. Take care.